Samuel Akman, your host of Never Give Up. Basically, Never Give Up is about interviewing people that have been through hell, people that have, have dreamt like really big, and these people are living their dreams. I don't mean like it's been easy for them, but then they came out strong. And today with us is Baba DJ Guerrero. He's going to be telling us about the ups and downs and the struggle he had before he finally came to the point of which he is in his career right now. I'm not saying he's at the peak right now, but then I can tell as a as a friend to him, he's doing well. Anyway, do stay with us. We'll be right back. And I told you that we have a very important person in our midst today, and this guy is a very amazing young lad. For me to say that, no offense. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Anyways, we thought, and he's going to tell us about himself. So, uh, Babaji de Guerrero, thank you. Thank, thank you me. very much, Sam. Thank you. Oh, well, it's good to be on Never Give Up. Uh, <laughs> not so you. very often do I have the chance of, you know, yeah. coming out to such a great platform. Oh, well, thank you very much for having me. My name is Babaji de Guerrero. I'm a master of ceremonies and compare. That's what I do. Thank you very much. And um, please, could you just tell us about yourself? The thing, what you do? Oh, well, I... I'm a student of the University of Lagos, yep. graduate student that is, urban and regional planning. I'm a master of ceremonies and it all started in 2010 mm -hmm. in the University of Lagos. I was privileged to have represented the Faculty of Environmental Sciences right. and um, at the university debate and I came children out at that point. Okay. Then moving forward, I also came the Southwestern Nigerian debate winner right. and of course the Lagos State and the Tertiary debate winner. Right. So all this were pieces. I was picking up mm -hmm. things I was learning and at the same time I got myself a good mentor. Oh, yeah. But it wasn't easy. It hasn't been easy because the truth is um, there was a status quo that was existing before I came. Okay. There was this way, it's meant to be this way, you have to do it this way. If yeah. you're not doing it this way, it's not being done at all. Yeah. I had to break in. Breaking in acceptance was quite difficult from clients, from people. I, I understand because half the time people wanted to stay. You see the status quo. And I, I, brought something different yeah thanks to god and of course thanks to my mentor thank god thank god we say thank god to that anyway where did you where did this whole thing start from where mm. did you get this idea from of becoming an mc mm, from from childhood okay. Sammy, for me for me it was tv from childhood you know i saw some huge huge um things in other child i saw the yeah. i saw the miss ward the one i, I want to go to the room on my birthday november 16th yeah thank you very much uh, <laughs> i saw i saw i saw i saw a lot of jerry springers <laughs> you know you just advertised you i just want you to oh, oh, well, oh well, i'm just saying that you know, something good happened on november okay okay so good people you, now they, they, they know you're family <laughs> please no 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 kings no nothing okay, thank okay. You. <laughs> But moving on, I, I think it was it was just as a child. Yeah. I, I listened to a lot of commentaries at the mm -hmm. World Cup in France '98. Yeah. I listened to people when things are done and people watch TV. For me, as a child, it was just who is saying the things that are done, who is doing it, with what mannerism, with what charisma, with what quality. Those are the things that I tickled my fancy as a child, and I grew into it. Okay. And then growing up as a child, I also read a whole lot. So I didn't I, I didn't limit myself to just watching the game alone. Okay. But I went be beyond watching. I went into acting, I went into talking it, mm -hmm. I went into believing in it. And at the end of the day, I had, I picked up one or two mentors on the road, um, the likes of um, the Grandmaster Basaj Tarya, the likes of Moses Praise, Sonny Rabo himself, okay. almost Sonny Rabo, Inspiration FM. This is a man who at some point has tutored me and of course helped me channel my resources yeah. into what I am today and we thank God. Thank God. For basically. That. Um, so what are your dreams and aspirations? Oh well, I think um, everybody's got dreams and aspirations. Sorry, sorry, sorry to, um, like five years from now, mm. how do you see yourself? I, I, I've been doing my best to headline some event centers in Nigeria, okay. the biggest of them all. Yeah. I've done my best to headline the Intercontinental Hotel, mm -hmm. the Golden Tulip, yeah. the, um, the Transcorp Eating Hotel in Abuja. I've done a whole lot of stuff for governors and senators in Nigeria. Okay. And I think in the next five years, I want to do my best God, it's in my heart to okay. get to the staple center. Okay. To get to the staple center to to headline staple center. Maybe come on, maybe you're in the Oscars or the yeah. Grammy or the Globe Award or the MTV Music Awards or something. I don't yeah. think it's gonna be undoable. Yeah. I don't think if I thought anything like that exists. But the truth is, I'm setting targets for myself because as a child, my mom told me that uh, if I cannot get to the moon, yeah. at least I can fall in between the stars. True. And that's one thing I've been able to push me forward when I when I feel down about myself and the situation I currently find myself in. Because it's a lot of talk, Sammy. It's not been easy. Oh. Acceptance is quite difficult because some people want the same thing. Some people, when you tell people that I can do this, I can bring this to the table, they'll be like, oh, we're used to a particular way. This is what we're used to. 
Telling them that this quality that I'm bringing is different, it's quite difficult for people to understand. Yeah. So I think uh, my challenge ever since I've been acceptance, but it's, it's, it's changed. In 2012, everything changed when I met my mentor. Things changed, doors started opening, and I'm getting better and getting the higher pedestals. And I thank God for it. <laughs> thank you. Um, so this question I want to ask you now, you have to think about it well, okay? Going back in time, yeah. with what you know right now, what would you have done differently? Mm. Networking. Okay. Networking. Networking and understanding that um, nothing is, is to be taken with levity. Mm -hmm. I think that growing up, I took some things with levity. There were some organized... There were some organized... Well, in the next five years, where do you see yourself? Hmm. I think I'd rather like to say where would I, or how much would I have given back to the community okay. because that's what I'll be doing in the next five years. I will be, um, I would have pushed myself to the limit of okay. being a big brand, a super big brand in Nigeria. Okay. Big enough to give back to people who didn't have the same opportunities like I did. People who really don't know where the next minute is coming back from. People who are lack of belief and self, self trust yeah. to, to, to deliver on the biggest stage of them all. That's what I want to achieve. And that's been um, that's from the angle of being an, a, a human being, let's sure. put it that way. Sure. But as a strictly career person, I'd like to headline Staples Center. Something between you and I, that's the dream of every Master of Ceremonies of come there, to get to the biggest lights of them or to get to the biggest venues of them all. And they don't become big, bigger or better than the O2 Arena in the UK and of course the Staples Center. And I think I'd really like to be at the Staples Center because the truth is, I, I think um, I've done my best to headline Nigeria's version of Staples Center. The Intercontinental Hotels, yeah. the Golden Tulip, the, the Musan Centers, the, you know, a lot of top class event places there in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. But I think the Staples Center for me will be the moon, definitely. Thank you very much. Um, I want to ask you, with what you know right now, mm. now, mm. the way you are. Yes, sir. Okay. okay. <laughs> what do you think you'd have done differently going back in time? Whoa. What would I have done differently? I think I would have studied more. Okay. Because these days, uh, most of the master of ceremonies I know just want to grab the microphone. Okay. Hey, hi, hi, hi. We do the same thing. But studying more and having to do a lot of research and understanding the kind of crowd that you're going to be expecting, the kind of yeah. people, the aptness of what you're going to be saying, who you're saying it to. Studying the crowd, studying the, the, the jobs before then, studying mm -hmm. yourself. Because nobody's a better critic than you. True. So I think I would have done that better. If I knew that before now, I think I would have been a better master of ceremonies. But of course, we still appreciate what we have become. And above all, we, we like more what we will become in the future. And learning never, never ends. It so never ends, my brother. It's it still, never ends. still learning. I'm still, still, still a learner. It's still learning. All the way. All the way, all the way. <laughs> I'm still a learner. Anyway, he's given us, um, he's told us about himself, giving us a little insight about what he does, and I'm grateful for that. And by the way, when we come back, he's going to be giving us a few words of advice. Okay, do stay with us. We'll be right back. Thank you. Can I get some more track? Mm. People would forever say, I believe in you. I trust in you. I have confidence in you. But guess what? If a thousand and one people keep telling you they have confidence in you, and you don't have confidence in yourself, you don't have confidence and belief in what you can do and offer in any field you find yourself in, trust me, those confidence is absolutely rubbish. You got to believe in yourself, you got to self-trust, self-worth, those are the things that keep you going and always find a way to adapt and fit in. Guess what? If you can't adapt, it's fine. You can create your own category, a category of successful and very, very hardworking people. And I believe that with God on your side and with hard work, with consistency and above all, above all, never giving up in every situation, I think this guy will not only be the limit, it's never the limit actually. It is only the beginning, beginning to your success. I'll see you all that day. Thank you very much. And then, in what better way could that have been said by anybody? Um, I'm, just, I'm really grateful for, for having you here right now. I'm just saying thank you to you. Um, thank you should be on Twitter now, not you? Yes, yes, I am on Twitter. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, at Babajide Guerrero. Babajide, B-A-B-A-J-I-D-E. Um, Guerrero together, of course, is G-U-E-R-E-R-O. As simple as that, Babajide Guerrero. Thank you very much. Also, I just have to say it's a big privilege for you to be here. All like, day, any day, Sam. I'm just going to say thank you again. You're welcome. And to everyone out there watching this right now, I'm going to say thank you to you all. And um, do stay with us, okay, for next edition. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. <laughs>